Yellow, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I have switched over to doing only deco on this channel. Just kidding, it's hiding a ton of redstone. So let's get to it. So I did decide to do a little bit of deco. We have kind of like a, a broken down factory here. You can see it's it's leaking a little bit. It's turned the river green from pollution. There's kind of steam coming up there everywhere. But what this is and what this contains is this redstone right here. Now you may be saying it's a lot of dust. What the heck is going on? What is this thing? This is a potion factory where you can select the potion that you want to brew from this selector right here. So it's say fire res. I want that. Oh, nope. I want to do some water breathing now. Shows us the status of the availability of our materials for those. Shows us the availability of our powder and our bottles to actually make that. We turn on the on switch and then it will just continuously make those for us. And then what it does is when we select this potion, it's going to select all the ingredients that we need in order to make that potion and automatically brew it for us. So instead of having to do, you know, okay, I want to do leap plus, and then we need to look up, okay, I need to get some uh, nether ward and I need to get a rabbit's foot and I need to, uh, what was plus again? What was, plus? we just have to hit that button and it's going to select the ingredients for us. And then all this redstone outside of here is what's going to do that. So if you come into the world download, you're going to be loading up right over there. If you follow this glazed terracotta line, you can go all the way through this process, all the way up to the deco build. Should be noted, though, right here, this build right here is the master build. So this is what I was building off of. Um, this has everything that we're going to talk about once we get there, and I'll, I'll get up through the progression. So when you get in the world download, if you want to build this, here's your master build right here. So I set out to make a 22 panel selector first. So you could select one of 22 options. We do that because we only want to be able to make one of these potions at a time. You know, we don't want to try and make poison two and plus at the same time because you can't do that. So each time we right click one of these note blocks, it actually switches over to that slice. We do have splash and linger on separate switches here because we didn't want to add in the splash and then suddenly make this, you know, a 44 selector where you had, you know, weakness plus and then weakness plus splash. So you can just click that to add in a splash and let's say we're going to do the invis plus so we have invis plus and splash and then we can also add in linger i did add it so that you can't turn off the splash if you turn on linger because you need to have splash go in before linger and here's the way we're doing that so these observers oh, let me punch this away right here these observers are looking into that note block. When we right click that note block, what's happening is this observer is kicking off, which then this observer detects, and it lights this redstone line. Now, why do we do that? Because we want to make sure that no matter which one is already selected, so even though I have that one all the way down there selected, when I hit that note block, it's going to turn it off before turning this one on. So what we have, instead of just checking which one is, we're just going to say, let's turn all of them off. So we have this redstone line go all the way down here into this repeater and then propagate out here. The reason being is, let's say, you know, we wanted to switch over from the water breathing to the swift. We have to make sure that we're going to have the signal strength. So if I turn that on and come over here, I'm not going to have enough signal to reach over to the water breath to turn that off. Much less if we're already over here on like the weakness or slow flowing. So we have the redstone dust power signal come to the center where this repeater is because no matter uh, how far out that can reach it. Um, in this panel, you could go up to 15 blocks away in this same setup. And then it pushes all these pistons up so this composter would get pushed up. And we can see each one of those composters is level one. So they actually turn on the comparator when they get pushed up. And they turn off the comparator when they get pushed down, which then flips the torch. And then we can see on the other side here, we get a selected signal. So here I'm going to switch to strength, which is going to be this. So here I'm going to switch to a strength potion, which will be this line right here. We're going to see that this one over here is going to push up, and then this one will push down. So that's the selector panel. Now next step was when we pick a potion, we need to actually make sure that we can select all the ingredients required for that potion. Now in the past, this was my solution for that brewing, was to just set up some chests and then put in the items in that order. So, you know, if I wanted to make... A potion, I knew what ingredients to put in what order, and I would just put them in the chest based on what order they went. Um, but then if you wanted to change potion recipes, you had to redo that, and you had to, you know, it was all very manual. So, you know, you could fill this up with 64 of each ingredient and let this run and, you know, run yourself 64 brews to get those potions. So I guess technically I'll leave this in here because this works. This was the potion brewer that we used on Syndicate. We didn't do much with potions. Um, but we can see, you know, you can you can come down here and see there's all the clocks that are involved in it and that kind of thing. But it means it's very, very manual. So that's when I needed to learn something new. 
This right here is a concept that is referred to as a redstone encoder. However, since I'm still learning it myself, we're going to go through the basics, but I'm going to put down in the video description, uh, if you check down there, a couple of links to some playlists on Redstone Logic that if you want to start getting into this thing can really help you get there. But basically, as we can see, as a potion is selected, so this would be swiftness that's selected, the ingredients for that get selected as well. So we have nether wart, we have sugar, all of these are turned off, and then we have glowstone because we want to do swiftness too. If we want to do swift plus... I'm going to turn on that note block, and then it's going to select that one. We're going to see that's still on, that's still on. But when I come over here, the redstone line is selected. And we have this for everything. So let's select invisibility. See, once again, we have nether wart. The sugar is now off. We have the carrot. We have the fermented spider eye, and we have the redstone. Well, what we're doing here is we're taking those signals that are coming out of our selector, and we're putting them over these lines so we, we're alternating between going underneath and above so we don't have the redstone lines running into each other. And then we have these other green lines coming across that we're powering based on torches being turned on and off. So when I send a signal through this first line right here, and that was that swiftness, we see there's a torch there, there's a torch there, and there's a torch there. This redstone line is going to turn off. And if you look there in the screen, we're going to see that those torches are going to turn on and it's going to leave our ingredients lit. If you look here on the top, you can kind of see how those torches are lining out. So it's, uh, it's really nice because it can take a really complex system. This is a really base use of the idea of encoding uh, because, for example, like the nether wart is only not used in the weakness potion. So every one of these, you know, has a, a torch there. And it, this, this might be a little overkill for this purpose, but I was having fun doing this and I, I wanted to make a smart potion brewer. And so that's where we came into this encoder style. So we just leave all these lines turned on until the torches are relit by having this redstone line turn off. And then they will light up these green lines. Then these green lines, we can see, corresponds to each one of our ingredients. So now that we have our ingredients selected, the next step is to make sure that we can actually be able to fill these into some sort of usable inventory. That's where this next version comes in. So we can see we've added in these item filters over here. And what we've done is we've added in item filters for each one of those items. We had to use um, an Allay one here because the Potion of the Turtle Master needs that helmet. That's an unstackable. So we just have an Allay item filter there for that uh, turtle helmet. But then each one of these can fill down into one of these droppers that can shoot it into the hopper line. And since these are ordered in the order that they would need to be for a potion, so you know a potion is always going to start with Nether Wart unless it is weakness, in which case it's going to start with Fermented Spider Eye. And then we have um, the glowstone and the redstone near the end. And then last steps would be the gunpowder and the dragon's breath. All we need to do then is activate the desired droppers to shoot our ingredient into this hopper line. And the hopper line will take that in order for us. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing a water line. So we have a water line to be able to fill these up, these item filters. But we're using a hopper line all the way over to here because then we know it's going to stay in the same order once it gets here. And then it's going to dump in there. So how do we decide if it's the right one? Well, we already have all our encoder lines. So all we have is we have this line right here is going to say, okay, I want to actually brew a potion, spit out some ingredients, but how do I know which ones? This is going to attempt to push all these sticky pistons out with this observer, which is then going to push up against here, except these ones here. So these lines that are selected right here, we can see the piston drops down with this block. But the lines that are not selected, we invert that signal and we extend these pistons in front. So when this tries to extend, it pushes the block, it pushes the obsidian, it can't push the obsidian and it stops. So I'm going to push this button here. We can see this first one is going to push in and these next ones are not going to. And then what do we have coming in? We can see our nether work came in first and the next in the queue is the magma cream and the redstone dust. And we have the fire res selected, so that is correct. Now, we don't want to have to brew this manually. I don't want to put in manual water bottles, and we don't want to put in our own uh, blaze powder here and all that, so we want to make that automatic. And we also want to start being able to see how much of the ingredients do we have. You know, do I actually have the ingredients to make potions? Am I out of nether wart? Do I have sugar in order to make my swiftness potions? That's when we move over here to this next line. So first up, we have this indicator panel to show that when the lamp is on, that means we have at least one of that ingredient ready to go. So we can see this puffer fish here, for example. If I come and I find the slice for the puffer fish, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take out all my available puffer fish. We're gonna see when I come back to the wall that that lamp for the puffer fish is gonna be off and indicates to me I don't have that ingredient available. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in here. It's gonna shoot then back into the water stream. 
And then the item filter will suck it in and then we'll show that to turn back on to show that we now have it in stock. Now, what kind of super complicated redstone machinery are we using for this? Dust lines. It's just dust lines. Now, there is a little bit of a misconception these days that redstone dust is super laggy and will shut down your server. Well, I'm going to go and open my mini HUD here and we can see that my world right now is running at 4.8 MSPT. I'm going to set my spawn chunk size to zero and then I'm going to go ahead and teleport 500 blocks away. Now we can see there's nothing around me. I'm just surrounded by empty chunks of one layer of bedrock. And up in the top there, my MSPT is up at 3.8 to 4.0. The tile entities that we have from this build and the, you know, the hoppers, the chests, and the droppers that we have here are going to be causing more lag than this redstone dust is. So as long as you don't have a bunch of flashing redstone dust constantly. So if these lines were just flashing on and off constantly where they had to propagate the signal all the way, then they'd be pretty bad. But right? I think it was about after 113, this kind of got a lot of improvements. And I think it got another improvement back in 116. So um, static redstone dust these days, you're, you're pretty safe with. I mean, we have all this dust here. There's all this dust over here. Each of these has a line. So that's 22 lines of dust, all the encoder dust. So we're fine there. So that's just the indicator system. But now what do we do with the actual brewing? So now what I have over here is an actual automatic system on the brewer. And if you look real close, you can play spot the brewer stand because now it's just completely surrounded with everything. So this hopper above the brewer is those eat ingredients that's going to be coming in. Those ingredients coming in, and if there are any ingredients on backlogs, such as, you know, we saw that the magma cream and the redstone were waiting in this hopper, that's going to kick on uh, this pulse extender, which is basically acting as our clock to say, okay, we need to wait 20 seconds after the last item goes in before we then try and empty it. That's when this observer is going to get pulled back up and send a signal through here. That's going to keep this signal on for long enough that we actually um, lock this hopper and unlock this hopper. So the hopper underneath being the one that sucks the bottles out of potion. And this hopper being the one that sends the water bottles in. So we want to make sure that we're locking this one while that one's unlocked. So we're not just feeding in water bottles to the bottom hopper over and over again. That would be ridiculous. And then we have this comparator here so that we can say, okay, if I'm out of water bottles or I'm low on water bottles, which will happen when we put three new water bottles in, it's then going to activate a clock here, which is going to then turn on this dispenser, which is facing into the water right over the hopper. So when it actually goes off, it's not going to have any slots left in order to be able to suck back in the water bottle. So it'll shoot out and go into this hopper and then we'll replenish those. And then we also just have a simple hopper line that puts in blaze powder. We don't really need any logic behind the blaze powder. We did add a little bit of logic though here. So you can see these light blue lines coming off back here of if we are out of bottles in our dispenser or not necessarily out of bottles, but we don't have a full dispenser of bottles or we don't have at least one blaze powder on backfill here. Not only are we going to send a signal along these light blue lines to turn off those indicator lamps to show the player that we're out of that individual material, but on the way, we're going to turn this line back on this orange line, which is then going to keep this piston extended, which means the clock has to stop. So this is the first point which we added in some real smart logic on that cycle to say, okay, if I'm out of either bottles or blaze powders, I'm going to stop the potion cycle from being able to continue. So otherwise, normally when this cycle fills out, this is going to extend and then it's going to retract. It's going to bring down that observer, which is then going to set off this block and power off that line to shoot in our ingredients as we saw. However, we wanted to add in some more logic and this is going to be kind of if statements because what if... I have all my bottles, I have my, all my blaze powder, but I'm trying to make swiftness potions and I, I have my nether wart that's all filled up, but I'm out of sugar or I'm trying to make leaping potions and I'm out of rabbit's foot. Do I want to keep making, you know, mundane plus potions by just putting in the nether wart, skipping the rabbit's foot and putting in redstone? Probably not. If you do, that's your decision. You do you. Weirdo. And what we have is not only do we have these indicator lamps here now, but we also have a system that if the potion that is selected runs out of ingredients, it will also pause the brewing. The other issue though is let's say we want to make fire res potions. 
we shouldn't care if we're out of glistening melon because that has nothing to do with ours. So we don't just want to say, well, if any of these are empty, then pause the brewing process like we have with these two over here because these two are necessary for everything. So how are we going to make sure that we only stop it if a material's out in a potion that we have selected? So this is built up here for each one of these lines, but I'm going to go over it real quick here, what we're doing. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that if a line is selected, so right here we have our magma cream. So let's say that this line is selected as ingredient. We're not locking that piston that's going to control that observer to set off new ingredients. So we have this system here where we have the comparator coming out of here. And then it's extending this piston and then it's cutting it off with a solid block. So this redstone is cut off. Whereas if I was to break this block, we can see, you know, it goes normally. So if you didn't know you can do that, you can cut off redstone signals going up with a piston that pushes down a solid block. So if I take out our magma cream here, we can see that now it no longer blocks it and it can then lock that piston. So if I was to then send another signal into this piston, Nothing happens because it's locked, right? But if I was to put that magma cream back in, again, that cuts off the signal, and then I can, you know, clock this piston all that I need to. But this line right here, let's say that this is our glistening melon line. We've got that turned off and we got that turned on. We do want to be able to lock that now. Or let's say that we're making a strength plus potion, and this is our magma cream line, but this is our redstone dust line, but we're out of redstone dust. We don't need this one to turn it off, but we need this one to turn it off. Now, you may be asking yourself, what exactly do you call this type of logic gate? Because, you know, there's AND gates, OR gates, XOR gates, NAND gates, all that. Well, it's very simple. I know for a fact that this type of logic gate is called a fair... Whatever, let's look at how I've implemented it. So each one of these lines, the purple line comes out and, and it also goes along to that light blue line to just give us the player an indicator light to show us what's empty. But then it also enables those pistons, which then cuts off the line. So when we have that selected, that can go through. But unless it's empty, that will cut off that signal. Each one of these purples leads into this orange light, though. So if any of these come on, uh, orange line, not orange light, excuse me, it follows all the way over here, snakes down here. And then we actually come up and we once again, we enable that piston. By enable, I mean power because we're not enabling it to move. Oh, my God. I think I broke my brain. And then we have this white line that comes out when any of that has happened, when either we're out of bottles or blaze powder or missing the ingredient for a selected recipe. It comes up to the white line and gives us a little bit of an alarm here as the player with that blinking light. So, for example, I've selected here the invisibility plus, which means that we're going to need a nether wart, we're going to need a golden carrot, then we're going to need to corrupt that night vision using a fermented spider eye, and then we're going to be adding in redstone to it. But then I've also added in the splash and the lingering. We well, can see I have everything full that I need except for the golden carrot. Now you could just say, well, forget all the logic. I just know that I'm not going to turn it on. But what we actually want to do here is in case we accidentally turn it on, or if we leave this running because this is going to make potions on a cycle. If I turn that on, this light is going to blink. And we can see here, this piston is being powered by this orange line. So it's got a manual shutoff. So nothing is enabling right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the lingering and the splash. So I just have the normal invis. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on actually. We can see if this, if we left this running and we AFK'd it and we came back to it flashing, we'd look, oh, that uh, it's out. So let me put some in. And as soon as it starts up, when this fills up, that alarm is also gonna turn off and it's gonna start brewing for us. So we can see we've got our ingredients going in, our ingredients on back order. There came out our redstone dust. It's going to keep this pulse extender activated until the last ingredient has left. And we know that it takes 20 seconds to brew. So all we need to do is make sure that we get 400 game ticks of delay in there. So there went our last item out of there. We can see that the comparator pulse extender starts counting down. Once that gets completed, we have just a brief second there when we empty that out. Those get shot through this water line. And then just for fun, we have the potions coming in through the ceiling where they land on the ground, get sucked up by a hopper and put into this chest. Now, by the time that's happened, this has already started its next cycle because we didn't turn it off or anything. So if you just wanted to brew a few potions, 
All you need to do is just turn it on for a few seconds, let it get started, and then turn it back off because now when I turn it off, what it's going to do, it's going to send on this orange line from that on off button and lock this piston right here so I can't send another observer signal to get more ingredients. Or if you want to brew a whole bunch of potions, um, first thing you probably want to do is replace this storage system. I kind of like this. It's fun, but you probably actually then want to make sure you actually have, you know, like over here, you could do like a shulker loader or something like that, or, um, you know, just have a bunch of overflow chests if you just want to make it even simpler. Because right now we don't have much overflow. There's, you know, this hopper, this double chest, these droppers, that hopper, and then this double chest right here. So if I was to try and AFK this overnight, you know, I'd, I'd be a little screwed. But the idea is you can pain free, just come in, you can say, okay, I'm gonna be going to the nether, I need some fire res potions, let me hit the fire res, let me turn it on, let me come over here to underneath the drop point, it's gonna automatically brew up my potions for me. I can just quick do an alt tab, maybe answer some of my friends on Discord, or if you don't have any friends, just type into a notepad text file. And we get our potions dropped to us when they're all done. And I can say, you know what? I only want a total of six, so I'm going to turn this off and this will be the last batch. And then we have our six potions of fire resistance of eight minutes. We're ready to go do some ancient debris mining in the nether, something like that. So once again, I'm going to leave this in the world. This is the master build right here. I'll leave this little arrow on it so you can find it in the list. This is where we started doing some deco. And if you do want to see the full deco version, that's down here at the end of this line. And I think it turned out pretty cool. Just remember that if you decide to just take a light matic of this and copy this verbatim, what you're actually going to get is the version that doesn't have the protection for the ingredients. So there's the protection for the bottles. It has the protection for the blaze powder. We can see it doesn't have the master alarm and the shutoff for each of these. We added in that logic after we did this build, but I think it turned out pretty cool. It looks like this really polluted, dirty, evil corporation place. It's kind of all I can build. Um, I should probably make it black and yellow. Okay, I'm just kidding. But I hope you enjoyed it. This is basically uh, me getting started with working on some encoding. I've never really um, had a use for it before, but again, I didn't like that previous potion factor that I had. Um, so that's why we have this. I know, yes, it is big. It is a big build. There's a lot of dust back there, but it is a smart system. So it's a uh, foolproof. It's not technically spam proof. If you want to go in there and spam it, you could probably get that piston timing to hit that observer off and kind of double fill it. Um, but for the most part, that's going to be spam proof. So again, down in the video description will be a download link with this world where you can see all the stages here. If you just want to get the selector panel, you can see that over there. If you just want to look at the encoding information, you can look over there. If you just want to look at the deco and make fun of me, it's over there. I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Bye.